do the sweeping again. So I now just practice uh, anapanasati and calming the mind, the body, peacefully breathing in, breathing out, this uh, relaxation, sense of well-being, Whatever, how, whatever you're feeling right now, just totally accept it. Don't resist anything and try to make your mind into something, but be more kind of accepting, patient, peaceful with the body as it is, with the mental state, emotional state, whatever, so that you're not, not trying to get or make yourself get something or try to get rid of something with an attitude of patient acceptance, letting go, non-resistance, peacefulness. The silence, listen to the sound of silence, the, the background sound, primordial cosmic sound. And then just notice your body as it is right now, the posture, sitting. Sitting is like this, and you just begin, you say, sitting is like this, then notice. You don't have to look at your body, you just, you just feel your body in conscious, as, as a conscious experience. Feel the experience of sitting. Sitting is like this. It's like it's an intuitive moment, your intuition, intuitive awareness, it kind of embraces the body. So you can, you have this sense of the whole body as a, as a, as it's sitting in the present moment like this. Then go to the breath again, just the, at the nostrils, a gentle sensation, the air touching the nostrils there as, the, as you breathe in and breathe out. Just notice that gentle, neutral sensation. It's not neither pleasant nor painful, not any extreme, it's just rather a peaceful, neutral, then say here.
and then go to the top of the head and just like we did yesterday evening, observe the any sensation, any tingling, any vibrating, heat or cold. As you kind of sweep around the top of your head, notice the top of the head now is conscious, conscious of it as experience. So, say, Vedana, Atuka Matsuka Vedana, isn't that it? Most of, a lot of the Vedana we're noticing is neither pleasant nor painful. It's Atuka Matsuka Vedana. It's, it's definitely feeling, but it's not strong enough to grab your attention, but you can pay attention. You're learning to put your attention onto this part of your body, noticing the sensitivity of it, the Vedana of it. Just keep sweeping around the head, the, the back of the head, the face, the forehead, the temples, the, around the ears, the face, eyes, nose, mouth. In the throat, the, notice the jaw, the chin, the throat, the neck, and the shoulder, that area. Do your shoulders feel even, the right shoulder, left shoulder? Is, notice any difference in the feeling, tensions, holding, Then the right arm and the right shoulder explore the Vedana of your right arm down to the hand, the fingers, fingertips and back up again to the right shoulder then from the right shoulder to the left down the left arm the fingertips back up so that this, this sense of going through, noticing this, the parts of that you'd never noticed before, you're never conscious of. This part of our body that we never, we never notice. Now we, we're going to notice every, everything, every part.
Or the, is this, this, the hands touching each other, if they're touching. Notice the, the kind of tingling sensation, this being, putting, the, uh, of being aware of this, the sensations in the hands. Quite interesting. Relaxing. I find it very relaxing just to contemplate the sensations in my hands. If mind wanders off, you start thinking, then as soon as you catch yourself, go right back to the body. Make that determination, don't don't give it a second thought. Once you see yourself wandering off, then go right back to whatever, to the hands, however you you were last uh, uh, noticing. Notice the trunk of the body from the throat down to the groin. Explore that, just going around the front, the back, collar, the uh, kind of sweep around the, the sensations in your back, such as clothes touching the skin, any tightness of your clothes around your waist. Just notice uh, any tensions, heat or cold, aches or pains. Right side, left side. Contemplate your your navel. I used to make jokes about contemplating navels. Now you can actually do it. <coughs> See the significance. Notice the pressure of sitting, the buttocks, is that sense of pressure, of weight, the genital area, the anal area, these are the orifices of the body, the sensitivity, the sensation in the orifices of the body.
kind of sweeping consciousness as the, as the various parts of the body, as consciousness contacts them. They're like this. There's vinyana, rupa. And feel a kind of pulsating, vibratory sensations of the body, living, vibrating, pulsating, moving energies. Then the leg, the right leg, from the groin down to the sole of the right foot, and the toes, exploring the, the thigh, resting on the mat, and the knee, bend of the knee, calf, shin, foot and toes, and back up, and then do the left leg and foot in the same way. And to notice where your feet are. Well, what is the relationship of the right foot to the left foot right now? You can just consciously notice. The right foot is like this, left foot is like this. If there's any pain or ache, just let, let, me let that be conscious. Concentrate on that sensation, just totally accepting it. The, the vibrating, vibrating quality of pain, or a, begin to notice it in an accepting way rather than resist or try to get rid of it. And then notice just the legs as one thing, the right, left legs and feet is just one piece. You're conscious just by thinking of that part. 
is one whole piece of the earth, two legs, feet. So you can see, you can concentrate on a point or on a section on the whole body. And moving up to the waist, and up to the throat, the shoulders, the arms, and to the headless body, just from the neck down to the feet. And then up to the top of the head, uh, with this kind of whole body, feeling of the whole body is one thing, one kind of vibrating, pulsating energy. Now just go to any part of the body that you're, you're interested in contemplating further. Like the, well, like the, say the top of the head to the base of the spine, or the, or the hands, or the mouth, whatever, whatever you, you feel like you want to investigate, contemplate, and do that right now, just to concentrate on one particular part. Regards to metta pavana, this, this metta is like having metta for yourself. Is uh, doesn't mean a kind of sentimental uh, feeling about your personality, but it, the, the metta is like accepting. A patient, non-critical, uncritical accepting of whatever the body as it is, your emotions, feelings, your character tendencies, your habits, good and bad, right and wrong. or condemn anything. It's the ability that we have to to embrace uh, in a non-critical way, patiently accepting even the most unpleasant, unwanted conditions. 
without hating ourselves or blaming others. So this sweeping practice can also be seen as kind of combined with metta, kind of totally accepting the body as it is, non-critical, this sweeping practice isn't criticizing anything, isn't you're not trying to make your body into some something you think it should be. It's what the way it is. You're just totally accepting the way it is. Patiently, uh, kindly. And so this is metta. Even if you hate yourself and you can't stand metta and you can, you can, uh, have metta for that. So if you, you find metta practice, you find aversion to metta practice, then you can have metta for your aversion to metta. Which means what? Accepting it for what it is, it's like this. Notice this mindfulness is, is, uh, it brings, it allows the thing, the conditions of the present to be conscious, to be experienced. Uh, it's, it's not critical function. Mindfulness isn't judgmental about anything it just it's like like the sun shines on everything good or bad without preference sun doesn't just shine on the nice things on this planet and so mindfulness is like that it shines on everything not no preferences not picking and choosing making comments about this is better than that. So this is what I would refer to as intuitive awareness. See? That like metta is an attitude, uh, with that you say, an attitude with mindfulness. Combined with mindfulness in which you, you're able to, to, uh, Accept maybe things that you couldn't accept otherwise when you're caught up in your, in your emotional reactions to your state of mind or your physical condition or who you think you are. And spiritual development is, you know, one of the problems with, uh, people that have spiritual aspirations is that we 
sometimes try too hard, uh, you know, trying to purify ourselves and and uh, try to become something, that some ideal that we have about what a spiritual person should be, or a holy person, or a um, a good person. So we, 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 in the spiritual life, we can get caught in an incredible struggle with ourselves. Just trying to, to annihilate, get rid of the bad stuff and try to hold on to the good stuff. And so it can be, you know, just an endless kind of futile struggle, uh, that, uh, we, we, you know, we, we just, can feel tremendous despair after years of spiritual practice, feeling despair because you know, we still can get angry and we still have bad thoughts or we still feel lust or we feel you know, we still get jealous of others and things like this and we still have fears and trying to purify ourselves and get rid of these things and no matter how hard you try it doesn't seem to work and that's because of the going about it with the discriminative mind and the base, with ignorance, the sense of self with resistance with preferences with the value judgments and uh, you just go around in circles as you get trapped in a, in a, in a cycle, the samsara. You get caught in that, just going around and around in the same old things, same old circles. That's why it's so hopeless and despairing when done on that, in that kind of way. Well, with mindfulness, the, the, the Buddha put this, this word, maya sati, as a kind of the, at the forefront of everything. It's very interesting. Is that a, the, a religion, religious convention based on sati, mindfulness, intuitive awareness, Sampachanya, clear comprehension, Sampachati, Sampachanya, just that clarity of when, like, shining the light, mindfulness is this. Like when you're doing this sweeping, you're shining the light on your body, so you're noticing, you're just aware of subtleties of feeling, of Vedana, that you don't generally bother to notice when you're caught up in your usual habits running around, thinking, and so forth. You don't notice, you have these sensations go on, but you don't generally notice them at all. They aren't that much. Or they don't seem significant in terms of worldly values. Neutral sensation, what good is it? You know, boring. You know, pain is kind of interesting, and pleasure. Pain, how we get rid of pain, chronic pain, painkillers. I talk a lot about pain, pleasure. Trying to get as much pleasure out of this body as you can, you can manage. Squeeze it. Exploit it for every bit of sukha you can possibly manage to get out of the darn thing. (laughs) <laughs> and what happens, you know, no matter how hard you try, you know, you get, you can get pleasure out of it, but then, but then, uh, you know, you, after a while, you can't anymore. Wears out. <clears throat> Become addicted to things that increase the pleasures, like, Addictive drugs may oftentimes you increase the sense of pleasure. 
we become addicted to pleasure. But in neutral, in where atuka matsuka wait in the subtle, isn't it? It's not, it's not strong, it's not obvious. Doesn't demand attention in any way. So it's, it's you're like you're paying attention. Notice this sense of mindfulness, paying attention, noticing. And that takes a certain amount of effort, isn't it? Just the effort it takes to pay attention. Suddenly you're, you're, you're bringing up, you're, you're, you're not just depending on pleasure and pain to make you feel alive. Like you do if you, if you're a heedless person, you're, you're, you only feel alive when, when there's pleasure and pain. But you're, and so you, you have to, you know, constantly do things that are interesting or exciting to feel alive. But in, in this way, you're actually coming, you're paying attention to, and, and it's a living, vibrating attentiveness, mindfulness. So it includes pleasure, pain, and neutral includes everything. It's not exclusive. Then metta is loving kindness. Those we, you know, we are hung, sakito, homi, may I abide in well-being. This is a formula, the kind of formula we use. But it's not just uh, something you just say, blah, blah, blah. It's really, how do, how to do that, you know? How to make it work for you? What, what is metta? Is it just a kind of se- sweet sentiments about yourself, which some people find, you know, they can't bear? Or is it a real, you know, patient accepting of the body, of the, of your personality, of your character? Good, you know, the good things, the bad things. Metta includes everything. When we spread metta throughout the universe, it includes, there's nothing ex- that is not included in metta. You know, we have metta for the demons, the devils, the angels. For the mosquitoes, or the viruses, or the, uh, all the nasty, ugly things, and the beautiful, lovely things, and the neutral things, and the good and the bad, uh, the friends and enemies, the seen, the unseen, born, unborn, I mean, is so, you know, includes every, every possibility. So what, what does that do, do to the mind? Is it, it's a sense of oneness, isn't it? It's a collecting everything in that kind of embracing total acceptance. Where when you start criticizing, then you divide. When you start thinking in a critical way, you, then you get into divisiveness. This is better than that. This should be. This shouldn't be. This is right. That's wrong. When metta, what is it? It's 
including right and wrong, good and bad. And that's that like all conditioned phenomena, and that everything, subtle course, So that's an intuitive ability, it's not, not a, it's not analytical at all, it's intuitive. It's uh, universal, one, oneness. So apply that to yourself, to your, to, to yourself as an individual, as a human, Conscious entity in all a, in in all aspects. See see what see, how do how do you apply that to yourself to to the experience now as this this being this person sitting here. And metta has no preference though. You don't spread more metta to angels and 75% to angels, 25% to devils. And same amount. You know, friends, enemies. Not, not a matter of, of, you know, rewarding the good and kind of being kind and patronizing to the bad. But it, Getting outside that whole sense of preference, personal choice, opinions and views. Another thing is, if even if you can't spread metta to the devils, because every time you think, may the devils abide in well-being or whatever, <laughs> and you feel angry about it, and a metta for the anger, you, know, you don't have to make it work on the grand scale or any kind of, but whatever you're feeling, you know, if you, one uh, one woman one time was trying to spread metta to her mother. She hated her mother. And every time you know, she could spread metta to everything, even the devils in hell. But when it came to mother, you know, she just felt angry. She says, I can't do this metta practice because I really hate my mother, and I know I shouldn't. I know I should love my mother, but I can't. Every time that word comes up, I feel it like anger. And so then, have metta for the anger. <laughs> Very simple. You don't have to be successful in this. Failures also. Have metta for failure and and for anger. Which doesn't mean you approve. It's not justifying or approving of anger, but it's not making a problem about it. It's accepting the way it is, as it is now, non-critically, patiently, not judging. 